Houston is the 18th team in Major League Soccer. It's the City Portland Championship. It is great to be home. Sports Sunday with Orlando Sanchez. Oh yeah, what is good everyone and welcome to Sports Sunday. My name is Orlando Sanchez and just like many of you, I am stuck at home folks and I promise you it's because of the weather. Nothing else, producer Craig, like a court order. I promise. Well, let's check in with Art Edwards who sent us this postcard from Slovenia where they're hosting the World Biathlon Championships all week. Art wanted to be on the show tonight, but someone reminded him it's Valentine's Day. He forgot a present for his wife, so he hightailed it into the woods there. No one's seen him for hours. Art, are you all right? Speaking of Valentine's Day, Russell wants some love from the Seahawks. If you had told us about the situation a week ago, everyone would have laughed at you. Seahawks insider Joe Fan will break it down for us. Plus, the Hillsboro Hops have some Valentine's Day treats for fans. How the franchise is looking to the future in a big way. And you might have had trouble getting around this weekend, but at least you're not this guy. Oh no! Well, yes friends, another NASCAR season is here. But we have to start the show with the Portland Trail Blazers opening a three-game road trip starting in Dallas. This is a reminder of some of the guarantees in life. Death, taxes, and entertaining games between the Mavericks and Blazers. Let's start with the Mavericks' Luka Doncic, one of the best in the league, and he lived up to the hype. He dropped 44 points. The Mavs had a three-point lead at the break. The third quarter was all Portland. They put up 45 points in the third quarter, six players scored in double figures. Portland was up by a dozen. But as we all know, no lead is safe in the NBA, and it came down to the wire. Tied game with 32 seconds left when Damian Lillard delivers the step back in crunch time. He had 34 points, 11 assists, a big time performance in prime time in front of a national audience. But this game far from over. Doncic to the rack, it's a one point game. On the other end, Carmelo Anthony, cool, calm and collected under pressure, finds Derek Jones Jr. for the play of the night. Dallas had one more chance to answer. Doncic left wide open for three and it's off the mark, a rare miss, and that's game. Blazers win 121-118, they won four in a row, improving to 16-10 and 10 on the season. You know, for us tonight, you know, that was a, a win that we all, you know, contributed to. I think we, we earned this win, you know, when you, you play the kind of game that we played uh, and you up against what we, we had been up against throughout the game, you know, it, it's rewarding in the end. Performances like this are making Damian Lillard all-star status for sure and putting him in the MVP conversation. More games like this, please. And the Portland Trail Blazers schedule looks a little something like this. A lot of winnable games for the team as we head down the stretch in this road trip at Oklahoma City, at New Orleans on back-to-back -back nights, and then they return home Saturday for a matchup with the Washington Wizards. All three teams have losing records so far. So as I mentioned, the play of Damian Lillard so far has fans voting for him more than two million times. And the Portland Trail Blazers are teaming up with some talented lyricists to make sure he makes his sixth All-Star appearance. When it first started out, it was very strict because Instagram only did 15 second videos. So you only have four bars to get your point across and like have the dopest lines you could think of. Yeah, dang dollar, dragged in 012. Story of a legend, it's a little dope tale. Justin Starling is an artist and songwriter out of New York. And he's a fan of Damian Lillard, AKA Dame Dalla. 
This dude is a beast, bro. This dude is crazy. Lillard created 4 Bar Friday, a platform for rappers to showcase their skills. So it only made sense the hip hop community is teaming up with the Trailblazers to make a push to get Lillard in the All-Star game. It's for the Blazers to come to you and say, hey, we got this idea, we'd like you to be a part of it. What'd that mean to you? Super honored. I was hyped. I, like the Portland Trailblazers DM me. I was like, oh, let's go. Like, and like Dame's always been showing mad love. So I was I was happy to be able to show love back in this way and you know support him. All-star, yeah, I heard it through the grapevine. Yeah, you know we talking about Lilla. The fan votes are adding up. More than two million and counting. Not only putting Lillard in line for his sixth all-star appearance, but he's got a realistic shot at being a starter. And speaking of shots... He's on the floor, step back three from Dame. Oh! Painted! Damien Lillard! Oh, this dude is different, bro. So I was hyped just like the dude announcing the game was. So we asked Justin to put his spin on it. Freestyling to one of the biggest moments of the Blazers season. Uh, yeah, Dame and my boy hit the three. It's feeling like Chicago. Hit him with a low blow. Bring it back. Now the other team, they saying, oh, no. Got to dribble because you know they coming on the court. So uh, we got like six seconds left. They hit him with the foul. Then I hit him with the flex. Uh, Trailblazers, you know we got the savior. I'm talking Dame Lillard, man. It's the game winner. Uh, yeah, it's, that's the Dame Dollars for this game time. <laughs> Nicely done, Justin. All right, let's switch gears and talk about the NFL. Normally, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks quarterback conversations pretty quiet. Maybe he'll play some baseball this offseason. Go on vacation. Well, not this time. Now there are questions. Lots of them. Wilson, as candid as ever, telling reporters this week he's frustrated by getting hit too much. On the Dan Patrick show, he mentioned the pass protection he's getting, wanting to be more involved with the players they're signing, and how mad he was watching the Super Bowl instead of playing in it. All of a sudden, other teams are reportedly calling, interested in Wilson. We had to check in with NBC Sports Northwest Seahawks insider, Joe Fan. Joe, this has got to be the most open we've heard Russell Wilson be since he got to Seattle. Just your thoughts on his comments over the past week. You're absolutely right, Orlando. And it was bold. It was a bit of a gamble from him. But I think he just figured, hey, it's time for me to put this team on notice and get a sense of urgency going in the building because I'm not sure that we're any closer to getting back to the Super Bowl than we were three years ago. Uh, and you heard last year, he got a bit more vocal. I want more superstars. I want to be more run and gun and pass heavy. Well, those you know, wishes were granted to a degree. But now he's put a specific group of players on notice and calling out his offensive line so publicly and so aggressively um, is going to ruffle feathers within the organization, both in the front office, coaching staff, and in the locker room potentially. And I'm curious how some of those guys reacted. But um, yeah, I think Russ is feeling a little bit nervous uh, and in his feels, uh, having watched Tom Brady win his seventh you know, Super Bowl ring, and he feels like he's still you know, pretty far away from even getting back. What did you think about you know his comments on I don't like getting hit, you know, they sacked almost 400 times in his career. You just never hear a star quarterback call out his offensive line. It just never happens. And that's a conversation that usually happens behind closed doors. And so again, out of character from Russ, which really tells you where he's feeling about the team and where the team is at going into what will be year 10 for him. But he's not wrong. You know, I think there's a, a part of his game where he will always get hit more and sacked more than other quarterbacks. Pro Football Focus has credited him with 104 of the 394 sacks that he's taken over the first nine years of his career. But you look at that Rams game, as it's the perfect example. I mean, he's pressured on nearly 60% of his dropbacks, doesn't have a chance on, on many of them. And for years now, the Seahawks offensive line has been an annual conversation of why aren't they good enough? Why aren't they investing enough? Why can't they hit on a draft pick? Why can't they hit on a free agent? You look over the last six years, they're consistently towards the bottom of the league in terms of spending and investment in that offensive line. So from that standpoint, it's justified. I just can't believe it. He decided that he was going to make it a public thing. I mean, you hear about teams being interested in players and making calls about players that maybe aren't even on the market. But here people are calling about Russell Wilson. What's your level of concern about his distaste or being willing to, to be traded. I don't think he wants to be traded. I think he genuinely wants to stay in Seattle and the Seahawks have no intention of trading him right now. I do think if there was a fracture that existed, 
this makes it a bit bigger. It's a bit, a bit more amplified. If one didn't exist, there might be one now. And winning cures all. If they get back to the NFC Championship game or, or obviously the Super Bowl in 2021, you know, then it's all going to be good. Kumbaya. Everything's okay. He's going to be looking at re-signing another deal and all is well. But if they regress again for the third straight year, remember the divisional round in 2019, wild card round in 2020, if they go backwards one more time uh, in 2021, I would not be surprised if we get to a point where, where Russ does go nuclear and say, hey, it's this, uh, you know, this thing has run its course. It's time for me to move on. I'd like to be traded. Nice work, Joe. Make sure to follow him on social media, on Twitter, Joe Fan, NBC Sports Northwest, the Seahawks Insider. Yeah, Orlando, I appreciate you, man. Great chatting with you as always. Hard to believe, but it's almost baseball season. And if you've ever been to a Hillsboro Hops game, well, you'll have more chances starting this year. The expanded season, just the first of big changes ahead for the franchise. And later, Johnny Football back on the field. More Sports Sunday straight ahead. And welcome back to Sports Sunday College Hoops. Now the Oregon State men's basketball team looking for win number 11 facing Arizona State. Let's go to the finish. Beavers down by three with 30 seconds to go. Ethan Thompson making plays. That's Andela there for the dunk. Just like that, Beavers down by one. Teams would trade free throws until this. Thompson, oh no, gets the ball stripped. It's a jump ball, possession arrow, Sun Devils, and ASU holds on for the win, 75 to 73. The future of baseball in Hillsboro looks brighter than it has ever been. Huge news here, they are the full season single A affiliate of the Arizona Diamondbacks, signing a 10 year player development agreement with Major League Baseball. So Hillsboro has a direct connection to MLB and its players. They'll go from 76 to 132 games. They'll also get even better on the field. Here's Hops GM KL Wambacher. Being elevated to high A is, is, is a pretty big deal. Um, the, the talent level between where we were and where we're going to be is immense. Uh, more than double the amount of players will make the big leagues from high A versus short season A. Uh, we'll see every top prospect come through Hillsboro now. A deal with MLB also means upgrading facilities across the minors. So potential changes to Ron Tonkin Field are on the way in the coming years. Gives us the urgency to to look at some development plans for Ron Tonkin Field, which is which is going to be incredible. So we're hoping around May or June we'll be able to come out with some renderings of what this place is going to look like for the next 20, 30 years. And, and that part, I think, is going to blow people away. It's going to be pretty exciting. Still to come, springtime this year could also mean football. Governor Brown loosens the restrictions on contact sports for kids. We'll break it down. Coming up. Manziel to throw. Stepping up. Now he'll take it himself oh. to the 15. The wow. 20. Manziel to the 25. Oh. Still moving to 15. Go. 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 10 5. And we'll take it down. Oh. Just shy of the end zone. Wow. Johnny Football back in business. And John Manziel back on the field in the new fan controlled football league. Fans pick the plays here. I think this one is called Johnny. Be a better player than everyone else. It usually works. But his team, the Zappers, lost 48-44 to the Beasts. And that is your Toyota Sunday sizzle. It's been too long since we last heard that music. Our last Friday night flights, November of 2019. Well, we could be one step closer to high school football. This week, Oregon Governor Kate Brown announced that high school football games in Oregon can be played again. There are a lot of things that have to happen. Schools in the extreme and higher risk counties must meet certain protocols if they opt in, including COVID testing, contact tracing. The schools also must have some in-person learning, but no matter what, it's huge for players who have already started practicing. It's a big sigh of relief, honestly. You know, it, uh, it's something we've been pushing for for so long uh, to get the official go ahead, and now it's finally here. You know, I really could be happier because this is just this is what we've wanted all along. 
It was a big week for high school athletes in Southwest Washington too. Governor Inslee announced the region is moving into phase two of the state's reopening plan. Starting Monday, moderate and high risk outdoor sports will be allowed to play with restrictions, giving the green light for a football season this year. We'll be right back. And welcome back. The NASCAR season is underway. Michael McDowell wins the Daytona 500, but oh, thanks in part to a crash on the final laps. Whoa. A lot of rain in Florida this week, and look at this. These rigs help dry the tracks, but one of the drivers slowed down on his lap, and those tracks are such steep angles, and well, if you slow down, you will go down. My bad. Oh no. All right, Night Owls, thank you so much for staying late with us at home. We'll leave you with our Plays of the Week. Brawl ready, it's go time. Lights, camera, action, show time. The heart of a champion, my opponents hate it. The throne is fun to take, it's so close I can taste it like. Shot clock is off. Steph down to two. He backs all the way up. 